Let's talk about the ideal gas equation. In the previous video, we discussed property tables and how to use them. They're long, hard to look at, and just takes too much time to find what you're looking for, right? Well now, there's an easier way, and we can use something called the ideal gas equation to figure out the values we need when it comes to gases. Using it gives us values that are accurate enough for specific situations. Here, P is absolute pressure, T is absolute temperature, and this is the specific volume. To use this equation, the temperature must be in Kelvin, not Celsius or Fahrenheit. The letter R is called the gas constant. It's different for each gas and can be found by dividing the universal gas constant by the molar mass of the gas. Fortunately for us, this value is pre-calculated on tables like these. It has the following units. If a gas obeys the ideal gas equation, then we call it an ideal gas. We can use it for problems that involve gas states, and the equation closely approximates the pressure, volume, and temperature of real gases at low densities. Now, of course, it doesn't work for all situations. It works for gases such as hydrogen, oxygen, helium, but when it comes to water vapor, as long as the pressure is below 10 kilopascals, you can think of it as an ideal gas, regardless of the temperatures. However, with higher pressure, the percent error becomes too high, so we have to use property tables. It also doesn't work for refrigerant in fridges, air conditioners, and such. Lastly, most gases will deviate from the ideal gas behavior at states near the saturation region and the critical point. Again, in those cases, we have to go back to using our property tables. We can write the ideal gas equation in a few different forms. Here, M is the mass, and most importantly, the V here is volume, not specific volume. This equation tends to be the one that gets used the most, because you'll be given the mass in questions. If you're ever given the molar mass and mole number, you can figure out the mass by multiplying the two together. Another way we can write the ideal gas equation is like this. Here, N is the mole number, and RU is the universal gas constant. Next, we have this. Here, the letter V with the bar on top represents molar specific volume. In other words, it's volume per unit mole. Sometimes, we have to consider situations where states change. In that case, we can write our equation like this. So all we're doing is comparing the first stage of pressure, volume, and temperature to the second stage values. Now let's go through some examples to see how we can use these equations. In this question, we have a tank filled with air and we need to figure out the reading on the pressure gauge. So first, let's write down what we know. The tank has a capacity of 400 liters, which is 0.4 cubic meters. It contains five kilograms of air, and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298.15 Kelvin, and the atmospheric pressure is 97 kilopascals. We also need to look at our table to find the gas constant of air. So that's right here. To find the pressure, we need to write down the ideal gas equation. Let's isolate it for pressure, and now we can plug in our values. This value is the absolute pressure in the tank. Now all we need to do is subtract the atmospheric pressure from this value, and we get the gauge pressure. Let's take a look at this question, where we have helium in a container, and we need to figure out the volume. Let's write down what we know. There's 2 kilograms of helium, the pressure is 300 kilopascals, and the temperature is 27 degrees, so that's 300.15 Kelvin. Let's also find the gas constant of helium. This is pretty similar to the previous question, so let's write our ideal gas equation. This time, we will isolate it for volume. Now we just plug in our values, and solving gives us the volume of the container. Let's take a look at one last example. We have a container filled with argon, and on top, we have a piston. When we remove the weights, the piston moves up and the volume is now twice the original size. We need to figure out the final pressure. Let's write down what we know. We have 1.5 kilograms of argon, the initial volume is 0.04 cubic meters, and the pressure is 555 kilopascals. After the process change, our volume is twice the original, so we need to multiply our initial volume by two to get the final volume. Let's also find the gas constant of argon. Since our problem involves looking at two different states, we can use this equation. We're told that the temperature is held constant during the process, 
so we can eliminate T from the equation. Now we can plug in our values. Let's solve for the final pressure, and that's our answer. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to the ideal gas equation. Thanks for watching, and best of luck with your studies.